Hey everyone, welcome out to another episode of Speak from the Couch. This is our version of Speak Miami in the interim during quarantine time and during COVID. Hope you're all staying safe and sanitized and sane. It's been a very trying time and we realize that we want to continue to offer a platform for people to express themselves and, you know, to kind of peer share, get best practices, whatever is going on out there that we can get, you know, in terms of good content and inspiration. We want to put that forward to you guys. So today's show is a little bit different. As you can see, I'll be the main host today. My girl Nikki is not with us today. She is training in a, in a class. So I wanted to send her a shout out and best wishes. We'll see her for the next episode. And today's show is a little bit different, not only because of the dynamic and the guests, um, uh, you know, uh, host and, and also the guest speaker that we have with us today. We're going international, you know, with us today, all the way from Italy, streaming with us live. You know, we have none other than a man, Fabio Tamburini, CEO of Catonificio Albini. Did I say that right, Fabio? Yes, perfect. Your <laughs> pronunciation more, more. is fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I'm working on my Italian just for this call. So listen, yeah. Fabio, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Uh, I know it's really busy for you personally and professionally. And um, I, again, you know, we really appreciate your time. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Are you good with that? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, let me just paint a little bit of background. So. I had the opportunity to hear you, Fabio, speak recently to a group. And I found the story to be inspiring to me personally. I, I, I saw a lot of people on the chat that felt moved by your story as well. And it's really a story of strength and overcoming adversity. And, you know, you're in a part of the world right now that's been really hard hit by this virus. And I wanted to ask, uh, what's the environment currently in Italy? Today, uh, I'd say that is a slightly improving the situation. Our lockdown uh, is paying an effect. So uh, we, we think that in the next 10 days, we will reopen partially and uh, progressively our normal activities. Although we are not yet sure about the way we will use to control the virus in terms of try to avoid new infections so uh, particularly um, in, 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 in our company uh, we have already restarted operations on the vital part of the company just with 20 percent of people we have more than 2,000 people in, employed in our company and uh, today we are following very strict uh, uh, rules about social distancing using of all the uh, hands cleaning that to me after two, three months of virus, it's the most effective way to avoid contacting the virus. Be clean, clean your hand very, 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 very frequently. The mask is not so important if you already try to prevent the contact by among people. And uh, we, we do a lot of pre-controls about the people, like temperature, and now we are working with our um, additions sit out having you know the blood exam for the immune or immune for 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 understanding if you are immune or not so a lot, so a lot let of me things, ask you, you know. let me ask you something sorry to interrupt yeah. but what effects on the employees has the virus had so far you have a large number of employees do you know of any that have contracted the virus or anything like that we have been capable of halting the spreading of the virus in our company uh, because we decided on our own, on my res personal responsibility, at the beginning of March, that uh, was the case to stop the activities before the government set us so. So uh, we decided to act in advance. And uh, this led us to uh, prevent the major spreading of the infections among employees. Unfortunately, uh, our province, as you probably know, has been one of the worst affected by the virus in Italy. So today we have had more than 30 
casualties among the relatives of our employees. Jeez. 30. Yeah. Mostly, you know, the parents, the elders from 56 to uh, 94. So we are very sad about this. And uh, we try to, to stay together uh, to, to make our com working community stronger. And it worked, I would say, worked. Uh, when you have such a, an extraordinary situation, it, it, it get out from you the, you know, the, the best and the worst. We try to get the best from the people, from the community. And our company is a, a family-owned historic company here. It's, it has more than 150 years. We have the sixth generation of the ownership of the family. So uh, it's sort of big family here. So everybody uh, is linked together. Most of the people live in the surroundings of the company. So uh, I think that we try to level the human values and the corporate values these days. If you look at our company site, our mini group is uh, probably the most uh, leading European company, a worldwide company in the, in the in cotton fabric sector with Thomas Mason, Albini and the other our brands. And um, the fact that we have been historically so rooted into the territory, uh, we are a sustainable company. We own the entire supply chain from the cotton field, you know, to the finishing of the fabrics. We have eight different productive plants. Um, we have a very strong community. And so that's interesting that, that you, I'm sorry, that you guys made a conscious decision early on to stop yeah. production. Now, everybody, I mean, uh, yeah, everybody told me, uh, mm -hmm. not doing so is not so serious. Our entrepreneurial federation uh, called me my set called me and, uh, and, 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 and the board and they told them, no, it's not the case that you do this way. It's not so worse. It's not the case to lock that down because if, if you do this, this could hamper your re company's results, you know? Okay. And we say, no, people's first. So we decide- People first. Yeah, the company before, the, the, we close the company before the others, all the others. So we That's have just people out, out of 2,000 hospitalized, just one. Wow, wow. So, and you know, you touch on something. I mean, that's, that's, that's outstanding because I think we as a country uh, in the U.S., we were slow to, um, you know, make the decision to stop operations, where, you know, widespread. And I think that's why we are struggling with it right now. And, and by the way, what we're seeing right now is a big rush to reopen. And, um, you know, listen, we still don't know how to effectively um, combat the virus, which is a concern for me and a lot of Americans right now. But there is a rush to get the machines back up and running. Um, what do you think about that? I think that uh, uh, life will be definitely, definitively a different story from now on. And I hope that this will be for the best, not for the worst, in the sense yeah. that we have to be conscious on, on, on this pandemic, pan, pandemic on, on this virus, on this risk. And uh, I think that we have to be very cautious. We have to keep the situation under control, full control. Yeah. Yeah. Which means until I'm not sure that my, my, my family, my company, everybody's safe, I won't perform as before. I will keep up with the controls. No one of us uh, has got the virus, fortunately. Right. right. And, uh, but this is because my wife is very tight. Myself is very tight with our daughters, whether everybody also at home. Uh, don't undervalue the virus. Right. It, four people out of five that take, that, that, that take it has very, you know, mild symptoms. But if you are the one that gets it seriously, you can die, notwithstanding yeah. the age you have. So it's completely different from flus. It's a different story. Yeah. So uh, this is what we realized also in our company. Everybody was very supportive to such a behavior. Protect yourself to protect the others. Right, right. That makes all the sense in the world. Talk to me a little bit about how you're, you're handling 
the family dynamic during this time because you know you, one you're leading the company and you're making these tough decisions you know that impact the company from an economic standpoint from a personnel standpoint how do you manage the family during this time i led my wife to the boss, to be the boss at home she's the boss she organized everything at home and uh, and sh we are a family i would say blessed by the faith and my wife has driven all of us through it's today it's uh, one month and a half it's six weeks everybody at home for six weeks in a small apartment as you as i told you because here we are in our company's uh, flat we are not in our house our house is uh in another region is at the seaside right. we are uh, from liguria uh here is very small town apartment very cozy but it's very small we are five in uh, you know 100 square meters that is quite a small Where space. Is five five people in that space five people yeah with two bedroom yeah <laughs> one kitchen and uh one living room and just two bathroom so uh, it's not a big place to stay but my yeah. wife has organized that perfectly and the, and our faith uh we pray two times a day we are very um i would say very attentive to our behavior toward the other you have to respect okay. the other at any time gotcha. so is and, that the entire family praying two times a day or is that yes uh, in the morning yeah? and in the evening yeah yeah we do that Oh, that's awesome. That that that's impressive. That's really awesome that you're able to. And how how old is your eldest child? It's uh, a nineteen, and the youngest is fifteen. Okay, so that's so, like hurting, that's like hurting cats right there. Not easy, not easy to handle. <laughs> it's strange. But you have good support with your wife, and and together you guys kind of get everybody on board, which that's that's great. That's great. So you, so your wife is the CEO at home. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's my, she's my uh, CEO. I'm just the president. It's an honorary <laughs> figure. <laughs> okay. So listen, I mean, as challenging as COVID has been, I mean, hearing your story uh, really brought perspective in my eyes. Like, wow, you know, Here's a guy that's gone through a couple of bouts of really intense, traumatic change. Can you talk to me about, you know, a little bit about what happened to you in the past? And Yeah. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, more than 30 years ago, today's uh, 35, effectively, um, I had a today? very... Wait, 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 time out. No, not today, say... not today. It was 11 oh. of all, uh, in okay. some, some decades ago. I, uh, I was at a um, university and... Uh, I was at ho in holiday with my girlfriend that time, and we had in Greece, in the middle of the Greece, uh, in the mountain side of the Greece, we had a terrible car accident because my car uh, got the brakes broken suddenly, mm. and there wasn't any bumper, so I fell down the mountain for over 85 meters, 80, 80 meters, wow. almost 100 meters. I fall down, we fall down, and um, during the fall, I, tr I tried to protect my girlfriend there, and uh, I had completely my myself broken. I saved her life because she was smaller, and I hugged her, and uh, I was very big because I'm tall and big. I was an athlete, very strong, but I had myself completely broken. In particular, I had my spine broken. Wow. I had more than 14... Uh, bones broken and i had also a severe damage to my spinal cord and this happened to you while you were in college you said i was yes i was 20 and i was at university yeah i was at college and how 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 was your recovery like i mean yeah everybody told like? me that uh, my my damage was too uh, serious to recover uh, doctors uh, told me that I would have had to to stay in bed for the rest of my life because wow. uh, my spine was too badly broken. And uh, but but I said I was quite stubborn. I had a lot of 
um, laugh around me because um, I was an athlete. I was also a scout, as I told you. Uh, so many friends, and uh, everybody told me, uh, Fabio, try to calm down, accept what happened, and uh, and you will recover. But you will recover as a disabled people, which means that you uh, you have to refigure your life on a wheelchair. And I say, no, I don't want to stay in a wheelchair. I want to walk again. So I try, uh, I spent about nine months in that. And after nine months, um, I was very lucky because um, uh, like a miracle, a, a portion of my spine wasn't completely broken because I was completely paralyzed from here down. I was 95 wow. kilos. I'm 1.9 meters tall, and I was paralyzed from here down. So from then, basically right below yeah, the from yeah, the yeah. chest so area down. Kilos, I became 60 kilos. I I lost about 35 percent of my of my weight. Wow! Just in six months, I was completely paralyzed. I had a lot of problem to move uh, my arms too, not just the legs. I was almost fully paralyzed. So how but after, how long were you in the hospital? 18 months. 18 months in hospital. 18 months, yeah. But then I, I started to recover a little bit. So I started to do a lot of gymnastic against the doctor. They say, no, you cannot do so much gym because you can have another accident. If you try to walk, you will fall for sure. And you would never cope with a new you know, injury to your back because if you go down. But I, I, I learned to work yeah. again using, you know, the, the sticks and, and, and also some, uh, you know, the, the, the toother, the, 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 the steel toother to my legs. So just so I understand, you, you were paralyzed initially from the chest down. Yeah. You regained some mobility and, and, yes. and now... Not so much, from the way, not right. too much, Rob, but enough to stay up, to stand up. Yeah. Because I said to myself, I want to still see the world. Yeah. Standing up, not not from from being, you know, sitting on, on a chair. But so what so kept I, you? What what kept you mentally, like you know, so focused on the recovery? At the very beginning, uh, I would say that at the very beginning of my story, uh, I was completely caught by surprise. You know, you are an athlete. You have everything you want in your life. You know, you're a successful young man. I was at Bocconi University, um, no problem at all the studies, uh, good in sports. My family, very careful, a lot of friends with scouting and so on. Nothing missed that time. In, and suddenly, you lost everything. You're a disabled and handicapped, completely broken, and everybody. Uh, care of you like another person, right? And you so say, how, oh, I, me? I'm really right. that guy. I don't recognize myself. I wanted to yeah. come back to be what I was before. I don't right. want to be that kind of guy. I don't want it to be an handicap. Right. So you have to struggle with myself a lot. So um, uh, I had, I was very lucky because. Um, part of my friends and my family tried to carry me, calm me, me down, say, no, you can walk. Don't try even to walk, to do any steps. You, can, you have to completely change your life perspective. And right. another part of friends that were following me, they gave to me their faith. Yeah, you can, you can try. Try it. So you took Don't the advice, you took their advice and kind of tried and your stubbornness, come, yeah. Yeah, do, uh, they say, I, I want to do steps again with the sticks and, 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 and everything. And, right. and I don't care if I fall down. I wanted to learn again to walk with my sticks. Right, right. Uh, and, and, and that was terrible. But if I hadn't had the, the right people to support me in this madness, in this miraculous madness, I would have... You know, I would have, I would have overcome this for right. sure. 
Right. So you not uh, you not love, accepting it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't accept, but I decided to carry forward my life with it. I right. did uh, at the end. I, I I didn't refuse it, and I didn't accept it. Just I said, okay, it's my burden. I have to live with it. Right. I have to live um, with my, you know, with with my loss, right. with the fact that uh, for the rest of my life I won't run again. And I was a, an athlete in right. athletics, so right. you can. When when uh, I told you last time that we spoke together, that when you know your body, what you can, your body can do and you lost completely your body, it's terrible. I cannot explain it to you. Right, right. But the fact so that you it, were able to overcome that and, and fight through and, and make something of your life and not just fall back on, you know, let that define you. You, let, you, you actually used it as a fuel to you know, bring you where you are today, I think. Yeah. My life has been an endless sacrifice. Wow. Because you... I've never accepted anything in my life. I've tried always to, to you know, to live and perform uh, for myself, for the people I love and I care of. And uh, I just, and I had my faith God to support me. Yeah. God made, made a sense of what happened to me. Right. God allowed me to accept just the carrying forward of my problems, of my disabilities. Right. And I'm sure that today, but I don't say this, my friends, my family says so. I'm a better man from before. Okay. And why don't you say that? <laughs> because I, I don't want to be too, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to be too suck up about this. But but I, I want to just say that uh, the, the, the the accident made right. me a better person for sure. Right. But the suffering has been, inc you know, incredible. Wow. And, but after the suffering. I restarted enjoying life and I restarted to study, I, I got a job, uh, I decided to work very, very soon after. I, I, will, I, I hadn't yet finished my, you know, my master there and I started to work for an American investment bank at that time. Very dynamic life, always. So on hang on, so time out, time out. Yeah. Before we leave your recovery, from the accident. Did you think or did you have any aha moments during that time that you can remember that you were like, you know what? This is a good takeaway from this accident. This is gonna serve me going forward. Did, did you have any kind of thought process like that? Yeah, I was proud of myself because of the fact that notwithstanding my very serious accident, I was still capable of standing up. Yeah. It's powerful stuff, man. And the fact that people approaching me, I wanted to be very sincere with you, telling what do you have? I have an accident in skiing, and they say no, I had a much worse accident. I fell down the mountain, and everybody was saying, "Oh wow, unbelievable! How you can recover from that?" That made me a lot of proud of what of my work down, you know. Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, gave me. You know, uh, a lot of, you know, aspiration, I'd say. Yeah. The fact that I had, and also the people around me, my friends, my family, at the end, everybody was, was supporting me. My, my brother, I have right. one brother, he was very young, he was just 16. And uh, I've never thanked my brother Marco enough for the mm. fact that he spent, uh, you know, at least three to four years following me. He was my, you know, my support. I was right. used to fall down 
two, three times a day wow. because it was very hard for me to walk. And my brother was always with me right. to support my brother first and then my friends. My, my brother, was he was just 16. Wow. So I would never thank enough my brother to stay with me and support my recovery. And after the physical recovery, he started the psychological recovery. And, yeah. uh, and this was possible also, but I would say in principle by God. If I hadn't my little faith, I, won't, I wouldn't say that I have a great faith. I have just a little faith. But that faith was, was the reason why I've never, I've never, you know, give it up. Yeah. I mean, although it, sometimes it was terrible. I was, you know, imagine I, I always, it was difficult for me to walk, not using the wheelchair to, to, to fly, to work in Milan, to work in right. then New York, then London. It was terrible. I did incredible thing if and today if i think of that uh i said i was crazy to to live that way but uh at the end of the day i said to myself well has been worth yes god me will lead me for the rest of my life i've suffered a lot but it, life is given me back a lot of things love um, professional satisfactions, uh, new new friendships. So life is so important, is so vital. Any days left is is lost if you don't if if you have not lived it as it deserves. And this yeah. is what God ta- tell us. Yeah. And you have to live for the others, not for yourself. At least if you can, for the people you love. Yeah. Where did you adopt this uh, feeling of service and, and, you know, serving others first? Where did, where did you get this value? First from my education. And then when I, I met with my, my wife, Maria Joana, and uh, she's a fantastic person. And because she, she did, she's come fully dedicated to our daughters to myself, and then there is she. She's yeah. the last one. But I was already uh, built up with such, you know, uh, and I would say an education. Uh, you know, I, I've worked for 35 years for um, important uh, companies that were used to tell you, uh, you serve the company. Right, right. The com- you serve the community. Uh, of the company, you serve the people. And first, uh, I was in the scouting. The scouting was to serve the the community there too. So to me, serving is something that is that makes a lot of sense. Also today, I'm used to say I'm the CEO of the company, but I'm there to facilitate. You know the success of a, a company that is a community of people. So the crisis that you went through as a young man and, and really throughout your life, how have you applied your learnings uh, through all those struggles in your journey to what we're faced with today with Corona? Uh, first of all, don't give up. Don't give up. Never. Don't be scared by nothing. We can handle any situation in our life. I don't want to be there now, but uh, we have to use heart, mind, and also our stomach in judging things, in a balanced way, always. Yeah. And yeah. look at our experience, because our experience is a master guidance for our life going through. Never forget the past. Errors, yeah. successes, always reconsider what you have a what I have learned in the past and how you can apply that too. Because I, you know, I'm not so young. So I live the crisis of, you know, uh, 9-11. I live the crisis of 2008 with the, with the companies, with my job. Right. right. 
I have lived some professional, I would say, uh, fa failures. Like I think anybody who put himself or herself in, you know, in challenge in, in the professional living. So I look back to my failures always to understand what was the, the right reaction I had in order to think if I can repropose. During coronavirus, the first thing was about, I have not to undervalue this thing. We cannot undervalue this because we had here in Bergamo, you know, the first cases. We had in a very small village here about 100 people, uh, you know, infected in just two days. So he wow. said, wow, this is not a flu. Everybody in February was still thinking about uh, it's just a flu. Don't think about that. You don't have to close the company. We, but myself and, and my colleagues, we said, no, this is probably not a, a normal flu. Mm -hmm. And the same in uh, my family with my wife. Because also in the past, people tend to undervalue. People don't yeah. want to accept such an extraordinary moment. Right. So you have to act in advance. So let me ask you, um, you know, you said that you're gradually reopening now um, and hopefully, you know, we'll have some kind of uh, way to really combat the virus effectively soon. And um, but for folks in the U.S. that aren't familiar with Italy or folks outside of Italy that just aren't familiar with Italy, when things are all clear, what's the first place to, to visit and uh, have a have a real good, good meal? Yeah, in Italy. Yeah. Uh, uh, you should you should go um, to Venice or Florence or Rome, or okay. they are the most beautiful place in is in the world. I wouldn't tell you Milan because it's too well, Milan is just one uh, metropolitan city like many others in the world. Okay. Italy right. is a country of beauty. You have to go there. Go is, here. I'm definitely going. Uh, maybe. You know, so hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, I can't wait to you know connect with you in the physical and and uh, have a have a meal with you, my man. Listen, I thank you so much for taking the time. And I heard you got your guitar. I know we talked about that earlier before we yeah. got on the call. <laughs> so next no, next time you're on, to you're gonna have to you play. You to come to Bergamo. Here in Bergamo, we have a medieval place uh, what we call Città Alta with wow. beautiful restaurants and terraces and palaces from that has a, on average 1000 year age wow wow where, this is bergamo where i live now with my company where is my company and this is one of many beautiful places here in italy consider for eating that yeah. italy italy doesn't just have more than two thirds of the world's masterpieces of arts, you know, you know that Italy just have the two thirds of this, but we have also the mo after the Amazons, we are the second place in the world with biological diversity. You can find a uh, thousand of different cheeses, uh, uh, vegetables, fruits. You cannot imagine. This is Italy. You know what? I, 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 you've sold me on it even more than I was sold before. I think uh, after your stint as CEO, you probably have a future in politics there in Italy, or at least being some kind of a cultural attaché. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, Thank listen, you. I really, really appreciate the talk today. And next time, like I said, you bring the guitar on and we'll, we'll, we'll do a song <laughs> together. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Okay, good. Scouts on it, right? <laughs> yes. So, listen, anything, any last comments or thoughts that you have before we wrap today's uh, conversation? I mean, um, we touched on, we touched on such gem. I mean, I've been taking notes while you were talking, you know, the support that you I, talked about. I, the think, family I just faith. want to tell you one thing. Yeah. Yeah. I want yeah. to just tell one last thing. Okay. Yeah. Everybody in the business today is taking care about sustainability. Most of us thinking about sustainability as a marketing tool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Being sustainable, in fact, means a lot of cost more for doing any kind of business, you know, because it yeah. means being transparent, traceable, and so on, okay? 
I think that this will be the future to be really sustainable, to rediscover the right value of living, values of living. Lockdown will, is a fantastic opportunity to rediscover the real values of living, to slow Number down our, our living, to be less superficial. And I think that we don't have to miss this opportunity. We as a company, and I will push down the company to be much more sustainable. I don't care if I'm, today I have a lot of problems and messes to recover my, 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 my previous situation, but I don't care. I wanted to, to accelerate our path towards a real sustainable way of living. I, this is not rhetoric, believe me, Rob. I really trust in this, which means having a more qualitative life because life is so precious and we have to make it more qualitative, not just yeah. to, you know, spin around just because, you know, you have to spend money. Do something different. And now is one of the very, you know, <laughs> it's a one, one time opportunity for us, I think. Yeah. Yeah. to to reprogram our way of living so there you go you're getting you, 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 yeah yeah you're, you're touching on gold right there i mean you're, you're seeing the opportunity in the crisis absolutely i think that this will be uh, will let us to be uh, more selective and dedicate more to quality so come to italy <laughs> that you will uh, do something qualitative in your life. Fabio Tamburini, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing with our guests and our and our and our audience. Uh, listen, for those of you who are listening to the podcast, Spotify, Speak Miami is how you find us. Check out the last episodes. The last episode we had uh, Steve O on, another CEO here in Florida, and um, great commentary from him. Listen. Fabio, you were awesome. You know, you're an inspiration to Thank me personally, you. and I hope everybody else that has tuned in. So with that, you know, all the best over there in Italy, and I'll see you soon. Yeah, for sure, with a guitar. And uh, if you don't come here to Italy, I will come to Miami because, you know, my wife uh, is from Miami, and so it's... Uh, Good. We will do that for sure. Okay? It's a deal. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. And we'll see you soon. Till then. Thank you very much to you. Bye. Thanks, man. Tune bye, in bye. next time for uh, another amazing episode of Speak from the Couch. Yeah. This is your host, Rob. Okay. Peace. Bye, Fabio. Bye. -bye.